Not shalom, everybody. As a contemporary society, we like to distance ourselves from biblical passages like these, which describe what the biblical author thought was an ethical way to have slaves and or indentured servants. We don't believe there is an ethical way to have slaves or indentured servants, right? But the author, biblical author did. And so the question becomes, what can we learn from these passages about a form of society, a way of structuring society, and in their mind, helping people who are in debt that is very different than ours? Although maybe not so different when you react to COVID-19. For COVID-19, this pandemic, has forced people to either work remotely or not work at all. For some of us working remotely is what we've been doing all along, just with less distractions. For others, it's new. For some, it's difficult. Some, it's a welcome change of pace. And then there are those who cannot work remotely. Their job requires a person to be on the premises, either in close proximity to others or shared workspaces. What about them? How do they make the choice between getting sick, getting someone else sick, dying, or eating, paying rent, or mortgage? Last time I checked, the mor mortality rate among those who do not have healthy food or safe place to live is pretty high. What does today's Torah portion have to teach us about those people? The answer, I think, could be found in Leviticus chapter 25, verses 35 to 38. If your kin, being in financial straits, comes under your authority and you hold that person as a residential alien, let that person live by your side. Do not exact from that person advance or accrued interest but fear your God. Let them live by your side as your kin. Do not lend that person your money at advance interest or give food to that person at accrued interest. I am Adonai, your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan to be your God. Let me begin at the beginning with a person being in financial straits. Targum Jonathan, a book written at the same time of the mission, commentated on Leviticus 25, verse 35. If your brother has become poor and his hand wavers, then you shall strengthen and do him good as a guest and a sojourner. He shall be nourished with you. Rashi goes a step further and writes, do not leave him by himself so that he comes down in the world until he finally falls altogether. When then, it will be very difficult to give him a lift, but uphold him from the very moment of the failure of his means. Uphold him by the very moment of the failure of his means. From the very moment we ask people to stop working, knowing that many people, barbers, gyms, factory workers, some dentists, some eye doctors cannot work remotely. We are morally responsible, according to Rashi, to take care of them. Not only are we morally responsible to take care of them, we are ethically responsible to do so in a way that does not put them in more debt. That is the reasons for verses 36 to 35. We are not to benefit from them being poor. This would have been true before we entered. COVID-19 land. How much more so now that they are staying home so that we can stay healthy? And the truth is, some of them are we, right? Some of our congregation are economically suffering right now because they lost their jobs, because they are not as privileged as I am to work remotely. According to the Bible, why were we due to do all of this? Because God did it for us. God took us out of the land of Egypt, God gave us manna to eat and drink and water to drink for free in the wilderness. God educated us through the mitzvot. Now, whether or not we believe God actually did that as a history fact or God did that as religious history to teach us a lesson, doesn't change the lesson, right? 
we have been treated with respect and dignity, and therefore it is our responsibility to treat others the same. As we travel down this road to recovery, may we find ways to help others along the same path to a physical, emotional, spiritual, intellectual, and yes, economic recovery, allowing all of us to end up in the metaphysical kingdom, the place where we eat by feeding our neighbor, who in turn is feeding us. Shabbat shalom, everybody.